Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, so today I was gonna create a video for you guys uh, showcasing the installation of the Steam application on Microsoft Windows XP. But in following all of the things that I found on the net, I mean, including things like, you know, modifications to registry, cloning the registry and details and data from a Windows 10 machine, copying all the data over, changing DLL files, manually adding DLL files, modifying DLL files, modifying the executables, uh, attempting to use an application called Steam CMD, none of it works. So rather than give you guys the full video, which I have available, and if you guys add in the comments that you want to see it, I could put it in the, in the uh, I, could, I, I could publish it. But it's basically 40 minutes of going through troubleshooting of trying to get this to work on an XP machine. So rather than wasting your time and mine at this point uploading any additional information, here's what I found. So what I found is you can actually get with MyPal to the actual Steam site. So we could go to the Steam store and we could install Steam by downloading Steam directly onto this machine. Even though this is Windows XP. I could click on this, I could save the file, and you would think, if I run that file, this isn't going to work. This is going to fail, it's going to throw an issue, it's going to throw an error, whatever it is, right? But there's the Steam setup, so if I run this, it will go through the entire installation. Just click install, there you go, run Steam, right? Yep, doesn't work. And that's because it's not supported on XP anymore, but they still allow you to download it and run it on XP. So the other thing I tried is there was a there was an ad, well, there was a thing on the web indicating that you might be able to get it to run if you add these options into your Steam configuration. So run the executable with these options to stop it from um, actually updating or, uh, or pulling the information back. But even in doing that, what I found is that uh, Steam pushes a registry modification to your XP machine. And once it pushes that registry modification, the machine, when you go to authenticate again, it gets flagged as an XP machine and won't actually apply. So I thought to myself, I was like, well, if that's the case, let's create a scheduled test that every time the stupid thing tries to change it, that the registry key that it changes it to gets deleted and we just recreate the old one. But in doing that, it just causes a loop. So basically, you get to the authentication port, and you just go over and over and over again. You never get in. So then I thought, well, let's try to see if we could use the archive version, right? So we grab the old version of the Steam application using the, um, the original configuration from the Windows XP days, which if we look, is version 4.83, right? So we can use the Steam Legacy application to launch the Steam app, right? So this will launch. And we can get to the point where we're going to authenticate, but the authentication piece fails. And the reason why the authentication piece fails is because there's a TLS certificate that's missing. So I thought to myself, all right, we're missing the TLS certificate. So what I did then is I grabbed our root certificate from the Windows 10 machine. Well, the whole computer certificate store, all of the certificates. And I imported them into the XP. Which let me tell you right now, my event log is filled with Crypt32 errors with the, the, the issue with the certificates. And that's fine. I don't really care, right? So for the sake of this machine, it was just to test if Steam would work. So I installed those certificates. And once I got those certificates installed, it made no difference. So, I mean, we have our PK, uh, uh, PFX, our, our full root configuration for certificates. And even with doing that, it still doesn't work. So then I thought, all right, well, let's try a hybrid. So I did a hybrid configuration. And basically what I did is I grabbed the new installed files from the Windows 10 machine and I copied them over. I also copied over all the registry keys. So if we go into the registry of this actual machine um, and we looked, we would see them. But a shorter version of that is if we go into Steam and we go into the uh, Steam 24. Four, and we go into registry. These are all the registry keys that exist on a Windows 10 32-bit system. So I attempted to import all of these keys. And one of the interesting things is if we look in here, we can actually see 
um, the DLL association specifically for the program files for the Steam directory for the registry. So when you do this, make sure that your file name inside of your program files directory is Steam because if you change the name, then it won't launch the registry. So I thought about that too and I thought, you know, if it's not going to launch the, the link to the registry, maybe we could use that to our advantage. Maybe we could connect to the Steam store by using the command line in a modified location that's not linked to the uh, registry locations. And that kind of works. So it works giving you the authentication piece. And you could put your username and password into the authentication piece. And you could click to authenticate. And it will go three times. The first time it throws an error. The second time it throws an error. The third time it connects. Once it gets to the splash screen where you're starting to connect to download the update, it throws the error again that says that you're not running a compatible operating system and you have to reinstall. So I attempted that too by changing the name again and trying it again. But every time you change the name of the folder, there's a registry key that's added into the system with that folder name and path that indicates that the system's not supported. So really, you're up against the wall. It's not going to work um, unless somebody modifies how the application itself connects to the Steam account, which I, I don't know that that's possible. Um, in addition, I attempted to use the... Uh, the Steam CMD application and the Steam CMD application won't work on this either. It throws an error and says that it's not compatible with this particular version of Windows. The weird thing is it will update. It does download the update. It does look like it's going to work, but after you get through the command line logic, it just throws an error and craps out. So I think at this point, it's fair to say that if you want to use Steam and you need it running on an older machine, just install the latest version of Ubuntu and use the Debian version of the actual Steam application. I mean, in comparison, you're really not going to notice much of a performance difference from XP to a Linux box. And you'd be better off running the Linux box at this point anyway from a security perspective. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this brief of my day of trying to get this Steam application to work. Thanks again, guys. Take it easy.